We've just come away from a wonderful run at the Museum of the Moving Image in Astoria. We had sold out audiences. The films were very, very well received. So we're very excited uh, about the festival this year. And this is our first event in Manhattan. Uh, you can't have a festival this year without acknowledging Theo Angelopoulos. And I'm very happy that we were able to bring a major speaker from the University of Oklahoma, who was a friend of Angelopoulos, to speak to us tonight. And of course, we start at the Paris Theater on Wednesday night with our documentary on Zmirna, and then we go on to other locations in Manhattan, uh, uh, both uptown and downtown. And we look, we're very excited. We, we have uh, much participation from the public this year. I think we're going to have a record-breaking year. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Well, I'm very happy to be here uh, because of the Greek festival and also to celebrate Theo Angelopoulos, who died in January, one week after I was with him in Greece, hit by a motorcycle on his set. I've done two books on Angelopoulos. I've known him for 35 years. He's not just a great filmmaker, he was a friend. And I can't say was, he is. He's still a friend. And that's part of what I'm sharing tonight. What his cinema has done, which is so different than Hollywood. Hollywood is bang, bang, boom, boom, fast, fast. And Galapagos is slow down. What is life happening? What's happening to Greece? What's happening to us all? And in the spirit that we're talking about Greece in trouble now, but part of what Angelopoulos' films say, Ela pedimu, we have had a history of thousands of years surviving hard times, Turks, wars, everything. We have something in our psyche and our soul. Please slow down and enjoy and take it in. That's why I'm here. Our lecturer today will be Andrew Horton, who is uh, a Phil Halloween. One of the things that, that Greece has that a lot of other cultures don't have is Phil Halloween's. And uh, Andy is 100%. Uh, uh, I first met him, I think, about 20 years ago, maybe, maybe longer than that. He was doing a Greek film festival in New Orleans. And uh, that, there aren't that many Greeks in New Orleans. Uh, and we did some festival, and I think we also had a TV program. We did uh, Good Eats About the Model, we talked about that. Uh, and then through the years, uh, Andy and I have worked on various uh, company, Greek films here and there. Uh, Andy became a, a leader of the uh, University of Oklahoma Film Department. And he was able to do something there that some of our modern Greek studies programs can't do. He actually brings Greeks from Greece to Oklahoma, to Norman, Oklahoma, which has about 15 Greeks, and really <laughs> does have a whole lot. And they show their films, and people discuss them, uh, and they do it every year, every year. And uh, I really congratulate them for that. And I, I always hold you out as a beacon, because I thought other people wanted to say, oh, they're not going to lift up, blah, blah, blah. Somehow, Oklahoma can do it. Oklahoma can do it, certainly. Well, there's some people in New York, but other places don't do it. Um, Andy also um, has been lecturing in Greece. Um, he goes to Greece quite often. That he's, he, he's in the, every time I talk to him, he's coming or going, it seems. Um, but he's lecturing in Greece on script writing, which is certainly something that we filmmakers could use. Uh, and his classes are filled, and I'm waiting to see some good products come out of those classes. Uh, he's going to be going to Greece in a few months or maybe a month to talk to the Hellenic uh, American Union again. Um, a couple of years ago, we put together an uh, issue of uh, film criticism about Greek film, which mainly went to American critics. Every year, I think for the last 20 years, he's taken uh, classes, groups from Oklahoma to Greece, uh, sometimes for a classical tour, sometimes for a uh, film tour, and uh, takes film students to Greece, and among the people that have come to his class to talk to his students is to do like globalists. Now, um, a number of years ago, but quite early, uh, Andy decided that Theo really is a great filmmaker, and he began interviewing him, talking to him, and he became a friend. Of, of, of so I call him Theo. Everybody calls him Theo. You know. Somebody say Theo. It's like Molina. 
you know, be calm and feel. Uh, it doesn't mean your bosom buddies can't do them with you like that. But, but Andy did. Uh, got to know him quite well. Uh, he's written two books uh, about Andy Lopez, which are the best uh, things available in the English language. And uh, a week or two before, um, in the last film, uh, Andy had read the script for the last film and uh, at Angelo was the uh, request. And he went to visit him in Greece and he uh, was in with him about two or three weeks before the fatal accident. So uh, he knows a little bit about Angelo Plus and he's going to tell us some of what he knows in the next hour. He's going to show us some clips from some of the uh, famous films. And then afterwards, we're going to have a question and answer for uh, anybody who'd like to ask a question or make a statement. Uh, as long as they're brief, to the point, uh, etc. Andy? And how do you spell? <laughs> how do you spell? Can you miss with an incommentable time? That was the vaccinating And we, we have nothing will teach them peace. George Sotheris, a Greek from Smyrna, Turkey, and Angelopoulos' favorite poet. Yes, the Greek economy is dealing with problems, and <coughs> Sotheris is telling us we who have nothing shall teach them peace. That could be the t-shirt for Angelopoulos. I'm very happy to be here tonight. And it's great to see some familiar faces. It's great to see we're competing with the Jets and that you came here. <laughs> uh, and what we're doing, and the yes, what we're doing is celebrating tonight a Greek filmmaker. I use the word celebrate because I have lived in New Orleans, in New Orleans 20 years. And the passing of life doesn't mean that things will you celebrate your life. When I was interviewing Angelopoulos at one point, in one of his films, Voice the Hebra, an old Greek who had been in Russia, comes back to Greece when the communists were allowed to come back. And he goes to his village, and he dances on the tomb of his best friend. When I did that interview, I was still living in New Orleans. And I said, dancing on the tomb of your friend and singing and celebrating, isn't that a kind of joy? And Angelopoulos well, said, yes, that's what it is. They do this in many villages. He was from Ponte and that celebration. Well, we should dance for Theo, but uh, we can at least celebrate his cinema. Uh, this morning, well, let me do this. I started with George Severus. Let's continue. When you start on your journey to Ithaca, then pray that the road is long, full of adventure, full of knowledge. Do not fear the Lestragonians and the Cyclops and the angry Poseidon. You will never meet such as these on your path if your thoughts remain lofty, if a fine spirit of emotion touches your body and your spirit. And then cutting towards the end. Always keep Ithaca fixed in your mind. To arrive there is your ultimate. Ithaca has not defrauded you with the great wisdom that you have gained. With so much experience, you must surely have understood by then what Ithaca is. That was important in many ways. Over the years, because I've only been going to Greece for over 40 years. I've only lived in Greece for over eight years. I've only taken 400 people to Greece. I've come to love Greece on many levels, including the fact that so many Greeks love that poem, Gaddafi, a Greek from Alexandria, Alexandria Egypt. So we have started with Smyrna, and the documentary about Smyrna is the Gala film uh, to be shown, and Egypt. 
Um, and so many of Angelopoulos' films are about looking for your Ithaca. What is your home? Because part of what Angelopoulos celebrates in his films is the diversity of Greece, the present, the troubled history, the mythology, the literature, and it's, I've written about it as a cinema of contemplation. And I think this quote says a lot about what he was doing. The world needs cinema now more than ever. It may be the last important form of resistance to the uh, deterioration of the world in which we live. In dealing with borders, boundaries, the rising of the mixture of languages and other cultures today, I am trying to seek a new humanism, a new way. He had a mission. He knows the world's trouble. Greece is part of the world, it's had trouble. But he's looking for a new way. Uh, I have a question. Raise your hand if you've seen at least one Hank Alonso's film. Okay, we're talking half the people a little bit more. And I want those who have not seen the film to get the feeling too. Yes, I was with him a week before he died in January. I was very honored that he didn't start the film until I read the screenplay, The Other Sea. And The Other Sea is based on a quote from Seferis. He did not start the film until I read it and gave him some notes. And I had never been on his set. I have known him for over 37 years. This was my first time. I was very honored to be there. Uh, and then in May, I gave a tribute in Athens to him. And his widow, Phoebe, was there. And I was touched after my talk that half the Greeks came up and said, thank you, and I just don't. We basically haven't seen his films. But from what you've shown us tonight, we want to see. Let me say one more thing before I start showing some clips. Anybody here tell me how long is the average shot in a Hollywood film today? Ten seconds. <laughs> Two to three seconds. This is cinema today. Angelopoulos' clips that I'm showing you tonight are anywhere from two to eight minutes long. That's one shot. The camera continues. He purposely wants you to be in another world. And I would say this about it. There's not a lot of dialogue in Angelopoulos. He captures the landscape and the visuals. And he had a mission, besides finding a more human way, he wanted to show the other Greece. Born in 1935, a 60s person who studied in France, coming back and seeing all the changes of the Junta, he realized that there are two Greeces. There's Athens, and then there's everything else. He was born in Athens. And making his first films, he discovered small villages in northern Greece and all this. He said, oh my God, this is another world. We cannot forget this. We have to stay in touch with this part of Greece. Martin, Martin Scorsese loves his films. Here's Martin Scorsese. Theo Ankalopoulos really understands how to control the frame. There are sequences in his work where the slightest movement, the slightest change in distance sends reverberations through the film and through the viewer. The total effect is hypnotic, sweeping, and profoundly emotional. I'm thinking of the wedding scene and the suspended step of the story. We'll see. That. The rape scene in the landscape of the mist, or any given scene in Traveler Players. The sense of control is almost otherworldly. 
And somehow, in these sequences, time seems to collapse so that the past, the present, and the future appear to coexist. In that, he stands alone. He is a masterful filmmaker. Martin Scorsese. Our first clip is Eternity in a Day. Hands up if you've seen it. Not so many. Eternity in a Day, set in Thessaloniki, an aging poet played by Bruno Gans is dying. His wife has already died. What does an old Greek poet want to do before he dies? Well, this one wants to finish a poem by Sola Moss that he did not finish before he died. He wants to finish Sola Moss's poem and then he can let go. In a sense, as I say, that almost every film of his is the Odyssey, we told, looking for Ithaca. His, if the poet's Ithaca is to be able to finish the poem and finish his life. Who is Telemachus? In this one, his family is disconnected, but he saves a young Albanian orphan. Casting. The boy you're going to see is a real Albanian orphan. And he becomes like Telemachus. He becomes a son. He becomes part of his life. Because what he explains to the boy is that Solomos didn't know much Greek. And I'm sure some of you are aware of this. When he went from Italy to Greece, he paid peasants money for each word he didn't know. The Albanian orphan knows some old Greek that he doesn't know, so he's paying the Albanian boy money so he can help finish his poem. What you're seeing now in one scene is uh, our poet, whose name is A, always uses that word, and the boy. And he's trying to explain Solomon's. And what you're seeing is one shot that starts in the 20th century now, and then it goes into the 19th century in one shot with Solomon's. And then we're seeing the second shot. So this is Angelopoulos. In one shot, he's got 200 years, or 150 years or so, with just you feeling it visually, all of that. Take it away, turn it in a bit. Hollywood would have lots of dialogue going on. What the hell is that hand doing coming out of the sea? I don't know. <laughs> the cinema of contemplation, as I call it, allows you to experience it. At first, it's surreal. Then, oh, helicopter. So it's something ancient they have found and they're pulling out. Hello. Does Greece have a lot of ancient things that keep finding? Yes. We go to the island of Kea all the time, and they're still finding things every year. It's just amazing. Uh, from the known type of goddesses and so forth. So, this is Greece, this is part. They're on their odyssey to try to find their father in Germany, but they see a hand coming out of the sea. And Angelopoulos doesn't preach to us. He doesn't say, it means this. Is the finger the broken finger pointing to the direction they should go. It doesn't say that. But they experience it. And they don't talk about it, they just experience it. One other element I like about Angelopoulos without lots of dialogue, because I think basically television has spoiled us. Pop, 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 pop. Angelopoulos pulls back visual. Uh, and part of what I say in my book, and I've passed that around in a couple of the DVDs, uh, is he's highly influenced by Byzantine art in that period. Greece survived hundreds of years under the Turks. The churches were there. What did the churches have? Icons. They were a visual history of everything. A friend of mine, 
at the University of Oklahoma is from Croatia, and she has finished a book on churches that became mosques and then became churches. Taking over the churches, crossing out the eyes and all the things that the Turks did, and then catching them back and going back to make the icons icons again. This is part of the history. Agamemnon didn't call his films Byzantine, but he wanted that visual sense. Oops. And that includes going into the Greek chapel and looking at the icons. We go to the island of Caia, which has 3,000 people and 245 churches, chapels. It's a lot of icons. Uh, so the visual sense is still important. Uh, Angelopoulos said that do people watch his films? They see it. He was shooting one of his films in northern Greece in the winter and had heart trouble. Went into the hospital in northern Greece, uh, in the hinterland. And the doctor was helping him and said, it's an honor for me to meet you. He said, really? He says, yes. Uh, I saw some of your earlier films, particularly traveling players. And I decided that becoming a doctor, I had to move to northern Greece and work in a village and help people. Thank you, Theo, for being this influence on me. Well, that's pretty powerful for being a filmmaker. I'm going to show you a clip now from Suspended Step of the Story. I'm, I'm doing the usual thing. How many have seen it? OK, not so many. Suspended Step of the Story, Northern Greece. And what you're about to see is the river you're going to see is a border between Greece and some other country. He doesn't say what. And one of my favorite quotes uh, from Angelopoulos' films is from this one. How many borders do we have to cross to get home to find our Ithaca? Uh, and what we have is a young woman who in early, earlier in her life was in love with a young man, but with the changes in politics, he is now across the river in the other country. But they decide to get married. They will have the marriage across the river. They'll never be able to touch each other or hold each other, but they'll be married. Again, Angelopoulos touching on the Greek spirit. It's not politics per se, he feels there's something there. Despite all of the shenanigans going on in politics, this young couple says, let's get married. I showed these clips to a group. Each university has a group that meets once a week for people over 50. I had a full house. I showed this. When the lights went on, a woman 75 years old, she was in tears, and she said, this scene is the most powerful scene I've ever seen in my life. Away. Thank you. Fragments of culture. It's great. So he's talking to Greek culture. And finding a new community, sense of community. There are only two endings to a story. You're alone, or you're with somebody. What he creates is a new Community. I would call this not religious, even though there's a priest on a bicycle. Humor. I would call it spiritual because they've decided to get married, even though the border is there and they cannot be together. This goes beyond physical and it's in its own world. And if you find her poor, Ithaca has not defrauded you with the great wisdom you have gained so much experience, you must surely have understood by then what that biggest pain. Thank you very much.